Welcome back to Typewriter Minutes. This is Sam. You are looking at a 1969 Oldsmobile Cutlass S Holiday Coupe W31. This is one of only 569 built in 1969. It's in burgundy mist color, code 67 with white stripes. Its engine produces 325 horsepower. We at Typewriter Minutes have been doing research to determine what could have inspired Oldsmobile to create such an outrageously cool looking car. This is a 1962-ish Sears Cutlass. This machine we got from Goodwill. I got a really good price on it. And we say 62-ish because we're not 100% sure about the date and we'll explain that in a few minutes. But first we thought we would give you just a quick tour of the body. And by the way, if you do know the date, please feel free to tell us. So this is one of the cooler looking Smith Coronas. It's a Sears rebranded machine. I'm sorry, a Smith Corona rebranded machine as a Sears Cutlass. And they put this cool racing stripe on it. Uh, so the burgundy and the white, I think, kind of pops on this machine. We'll give a, a quick tour here on the side and the back before we show you the features, but I think it's one of the better looking Smith Coronas of that vintage. Just really cool looking all around. The white doodad that covers the left side carriage release lever was busted when I got it, but thanks to Dwayne at Phoenix Typewriter, I have a new one. Thanks, Dwayne. We looked up the serial number on the typewriter database, but the information was a little bit sparse. So we looked at advertisements. This is a 1962 ad for a Sears Tower Citation 88. And the body style, the platen knobs, the paper bail rollers, and the touch control lever on the front all look to be dead ringers for the Sears Cutlass. So other advertisements from 63 to 64 were also similar. So. I would say 62 to 64 would be the manufacture date. Now, let's quickly go over the keyboard, as I'm sure you're all expecting. So the keys, it's a kind of a standard layout. It's a QWERTY keyboard. Uh, a couple interesting features on this that you don't see on all the Smith Cronas or Sears. First thing, it has these removable key tops. This one's a little bit worn, but it's a one and an exclamation mark. And then over here, there's a plus and an equal sign and these actually pop off. And you can change them. So the top of the keys pop off and you can buy, they're still available on eBay every now and then, key tops that you can switch that come with matching slugs, type slugs. So you'll notice this type bar and this one over here for that plus equal sign on the right has a removable type slug. Uh, it actually has instructions up here, if you'll zoom in, on how to do it. So they tell you to lift up the type bar a little bit. Let's see, which one is it? There we go. And you can actually take those off. And this one's, again, the one and an exclamation mark, but you can buy custom type slugs to match the key tops. So that was kind of a neat feature. And it just slides back just you pull it this way to get it off and then when you put it back on it slides back in that way so over and up and then back on it's easy peasy there's a little place in here if you'll zoom in there it says this space is for change of type storage box I've never seen one of those storage boxes in person I've seen a few online, but eventually I would like to get one of those change type boxes with a few extra type slugs and matching key tops. I think that's a pretty nifty feature. Okay, before we go back to the keys, just a final note about the type basket here. This came with the original metal spools. We put on a new ribbon. This machine was actually super clean when we got it. So other than cleaning the keys and the platen knobs and doing a light dust out, really didn't need to do much cleaning on this so that was uh, an added bonus it's got the basket shift all smith coronas like the, this vintage have the basket shift which is really light up to the touch um, so it's a really good typer and we'll get into the type test in a few minutes a couple other notes about uh, the front of the machine it's got the touch control lever right here which is a little ball that slides back and forth between uh, heavy and light touch 
And then when we got it, this little face plate that says Sears Cutlass was coming off. It was almost completely detached from the metal part back here. So I glued that back on with liquid nails and looks like it's good to go. Hopefully it'll stay there for another 50 years. Okay, back to the front of the machine. You have the touch control, I'm sorry, the, the ribbon reverse lever right there. We have the ribbon color selector down in there. It's got black, stencil, red. And then here we have the tab set and clear, which is the same on most all of these Smith Coronas. Right now there's no tab set. So to set the tab, you just go to wherever you want. You hit set, set, and your tabs are set. And if you want to clear them one at a time, tab, clear, tab, clear. Now they should all be cleared. The nifty thing about this machine is that it has this little paragraph feature. And when we did our Facet TP1 review, we said that that was the only typewriter that we had seen with that type of a tab system where you could set and clear individual tab stops, but it also had a lever that you could press and clear a bunch of preset tab stops. This is a little bit different, but it's similar because this has preset tabs in effect every five spaces. So regardless of whether there are tabs set, which right now there are none, if you hit the paragraph button, it's like a little tab button for every five spaces. So a little bit different than the facet, but it's kind of a neat feature that I've only seen on a handful of these Smith Chromas and Sears. One final, final note about the tight basket. In addition to the manual reverse, ribbon reverse lever right here, it does have an automatic ribbon verse system. So you have to have eyelets on the ribbons and it gets triggered when the eyelets pass through this fork on this side or this fork on the left side. Next, we'd like to show you some differences between the Sears Cutlass and the standard Smith Corona Galaxy 2 of that area. So this is also a Goodwill machine. Uh, I haven't cleaned it up yet, but one difference is these paper belt rollers. This one is more like a hot rod style, and this one is more like a steamroller style. So most Smith Coronas from the 50s and 60s have this just plain rubber paper belt roller. Sears Cutlass has the hot rod rollers. We've seen those also on Sears Tower Citation 88s. If you've seen them on any other machines, let us know. The next difference has to do with the carriage release levers. So earlier Smith Coronas had a solid metal carriage release lever. At some point they started putting these plastic toppers on them. And this one is on backwards compared to the other Smith Coronas. If you'll notice on this Galaxy 2, the bigger flat part of the lever is towards the back, and then the little beveled side is on the front. And then when you take a look at the Sears Cutlass, it's backwards. The flat spot is towards the front, and the beveled side is toward the rear. I've looked at some other machines online, and I've compared notes with other vintage, uh, I'm sorry, other Sears Cutlass owners, and theirs are all like this. I don't know, I guess Smith Krona decided they wanted their machines to look a little bit differently. I don't know if there are any other makes that had the carriage topper, carriage lever toppers on backwards like that, but uh, something a little bit different. Before we do the type test, as usual, we're gonna go all the way around the typewriter. So up here we have paper bale with the really cool rollers. Paper release lever right here. Margins. Sliding margin buttons. The bunny ears. Got the pop-up paper supports. The platinum roller. Platinum knobs. I kind of like the, the, the design on this one. It's got these little etched in things here, plus a cool beveled design in the middle. Gives it Here's kind of a nice look. Here's the carriage release like we just showed you carriage release lever and then on the back has kind of a neat up here it's smooth but down here you have this ribbed 
um, back plates, which gives it kind of a neat look. Here's the Sears logo and the racing stripe. And over here we have the single space, double space, triple space, and then finally the uh, release levers if you want to fill in forms. You can either pull out this knob on the side to let the platen move freely. I think when you do this one, you lose your click position. And then this lever right here, you pull it and it also moves freely. But when you put it back, it remembers your click position. Here's the page gauge. Page gauge. So we'll look at our 1956 Smith Corona review if you want to see how the page gauge works. And finally, there's the quick and easy platen popping out feature. So this little cover here, which is actually plastic, most of the machine is metal. This thing here is plastic pops up like that. This little lever right here, if you push it down or pull it this way, the platen comes right out. So it's easy to clean the platen, which I need to do on this one. And you can clear out stuff or clean the paper tray underneath. And then when you're ready to put it back in, uh, the carriage all the way to the right slides right back in. You're good to go. Now for a super quick typing test. Paper support up. Paper in. First, on the black setting, thing we noticed when typing on this machine and I think maybe it has to do with the fact that there's no sound deadening material anywhere on the inside there's no felt but every time when we hit a key it makes kind of a ohm sound like it's meditating ohm so let's put the speaker right up here and see if you can hear it You may not be able to pick that up, but it does make kind of a ohm sound, which is interesting. Um, I don't know if it'll be annoying, but it's at least interesting. Okay, here's a quick look at the bottom of the machine. It's the standard Smith Kona layout. Rubber feet look like brand new. It was super clean when we got it. So that's always love it when I get a machine and don't have to do a chemical clean. Easy to work on, easy to clean. It's one of the reasons I love Smith Coronas. Here's a quick review of the case. So it's the standard 1960s trim line carrying case from Smith Corona, but unfortunately the latch was busted in shipment. I have most of the pieces. It's got the Sears brand on it. And then I have little springs and innards. I studied it for about a half hour and I figured out how the little pieces fit in there but what I haven't figured out is once I have them all in here how am I going to get it glued or reattached to the case without the springs falling out I haven't figured that out yet so if you have one of these apart and you've figured out how to reattach and reassemble this latch to the case let us know because if we can't get it fixed we're gonna have to find a, a parts machine and use the case from that one instead 
Or I can use a belt, like I did with this one, which is also yet to be fixed. We'll finish up this video with some pros and cons. Some pros include the cool color scheme, the changeable type slugs, the hot rod paper bail rollers, the nifty paragraph feature, and easy to work on and clean. And the cons of this 1962-ish Sears Cutlass is the sound echoing while typing. I guess you could add some sound editing material, but we're gonna leave it like it is because I just, I like it stock like that. And then the broken latch on the case, which I'm gonna try to fix, but if we can't fix it, we'll get a parts machine, or we have some other machines that might become parts machines, in which case we can use a standard trim line case as a replacement. That's all for now on Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye.